This video is going to take a look at how we can make a confidence interval for a proportion. When we're working with the binomial distribution, we have two options, either success or failure. Often we're interested in what proportion of our results were successes. This is what we call p hat. The proportion or percentage of successes is the number of successes r divided by the number of options n. If p is the proportion of successes, q then is the proportion of failures, 1 minus p. The method we're going to talk about here with confidence intervals is only valid if the sample size times the proportion of success is greater than 5 and the sample size times the proportion of failure is greater than 5. If the numbers are too small, this method won't work. But if we do have this relationship that n times p hat and n times q hat are both greater than 5, we can calculate a potential error between our sample proportion and the actual population proportion using a z critical value. This formula says we take the z critical value times the square root of p hat q hat divided by n. Other than this new formula for the error, the process of the confidence interval is exactly the same. We'll subtract and add that error to the sample proportion, and we've got our lower bound and upper bound for the confidence interval. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we've got a sample of 800 students who received the flu shot. That's our full sample. That's our n. Of those 800 students who received the flu shot and were exposed to the flu, 600 of them did not get the flu. That's our number of successes, r. We're going to make a 99% confidence interval for the true proportion of students who received the flu shot, were exposed to the flu, and did not get the flu. So first, we need to know what is our sample proportion, our p hat. That is equal to our r divided by n, the number of successes, 600, divided by the possibilities of 800. That's going to come up to 0.75. Our p hat is 0.75. q hat, then, is the proportion of failures, which is 1 minus our p hat, or 1 minus 0.75. And that's going to be 0.25. So p hat's 0.75, q hat's 0.25. We're going to find a 99% confidence interval. And very similar to how we did our confidence intervals before, we want 99% on the inside, which means alpha, the tails, is 1 minus 0.99, which is equal to 0.01. And since we're doing a z with proportions, proportions are always z, we want to find out what's in one tail. That's alpha divided by 2 or 0.01 divided by 2, which is 0 0.005. So we want 0 0.005 in the tail. Let's go to Excel to figure out what our z sub c, our z critical values, are going to be. All we have to do is type in equals norm dot s dot inverse, the probability of 0 0.005. And when we hit enter, we find the value is negative 2.576. So the positive value then is 2.576. We now have our critical value. We're ready to go to our formula for the error, which is our z subcritical value times the square root of p hat q hat divided by the sample size. Well, our critical value was 2.576 times the square root of p hat, which is 0.75, times q hat, which is 0.25, divided by our sample size. We said there were 800 students. So now we can go to our calculator to figure out what kind of error we have with our proportion. 2.576 times the square root of 0.75 times 0.25 divided by 800, making sure all that stuff is underneath the square root. Don't close the square root too soon. You should get, rounding to two decimal digits, 0 0.039.
So that is our error at 99% confidence that our proportion is off from the population proportion. So for our confidence interval, we'll take the proportion we found and subtract the error for the lower bound and the proportion we found and add the error for the upper bound. The proportion we found was 75% or 0.75. When I subtract 0.039, we get a lower bound of 0.711. When we add the 0.039, we get an upper bound of 0.789. And so we can say we are 99% confident that the true proportion of students who receive the flu shot and are exposed to the flu who do not get the flu is between 0.711 and 0.789. Hopefully this video is helpful for you then as you make a confidence interval for a proportion. We've got a slightly different formula for our error value, but other than that, the process of making a confidence interval is exactly the same. So good luck to you as you continue working on these.